Over the years, I've produced a number of videos talking about the Granville Sharp rule and how that it argues for, in a sense, uh, at least partially, the deity of Christ. And when I do this, I've often had people reply saying, well, the Granville Sharp rule was just made up to support the whole idea of the deity of Christ. Well, in this video, we're going to look at that again, and we're going to see that actually, no, the Granville Sharp rule was discovered. I'm going to show you lots of reasons why or where we see the Granville Sharp rule outside of the two verses, really, that are controversial. And we'll see that the Granville Sharp rule actually holds up. Hi, I'm Daryl Burling from Biblical Mastery Academy, and we help people just like you learn to read and study the New Testament in the original languages. If you're interested in that, uh, head along to bma.to slash get started, find out more. Uh, we've got a free getting started course that will help you get underway, even if you know no Greek whatsoever. So one of the things, like I mentioned, over the years, I've done a number of videos talking about the Granville Sharp Rule, which is a rule that was discovered in the 1700s by a individual by the name of Granville Sharp, an Englishman who I'll talk about him another time because there's actually a really good story behind that that's really interesting and I'll tell you about that another time. But anyway, Granville Sharp discovered this rule and the name, the, the Granville Sharp rule was coined off the back of his discovery and his work. The Granville Sharp rule is actually a pretty well defined rule in the sense that it has two core requirements and three qualifiers, if you like, that we can talk about. Now, I've talked about these elsewhere, so I'm not going to go into detail on these here, but let me just summarize them quickly for you. First of all, the Granville Sharp rule requires two substantives of the same case. Now, by two substantives, what we're talking about is something that's functioning as a noun. So it could be an adjective or a participle working as a noun, uh, but they're going to be two substantives functioning as nouns. The first one's going to have the article and they're going to be joined by chi or ki, depending on your pronunciation method. So the whole idea here is you've got two nouns they refer to the same person, that's another thing. Uh, they have the same entity, a personal entity, that's one of the requirements. We're talking about a person here, not people plural, and not individual items. And so the qualifiers for this are, we're referring to people, first of all, there's a personal reference, if you like. They are not proper nouns, so we're not going to be using, you know, somebody's name. So John and Paul are going to be two different people you know, even if there's only one article and so on. And only singular substantives qualify. So we're not talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees, which are plurals, we're just talking about singulars, okay? So, two substantives joined by key. The first one has the article, the second one does not. You may have more than two, we'll see that as we go through here. Uh, they're referring to personal, uh, personal, they've got a personal referent. Uh, they are not proper nouns and they are singular. Okay, so those are the requirements for the Granville Sharp rule to hold. I'll show you some examples of this in just a moment, but before we get there, let me just ask the question, why is this even a question? Why are we even worried about this? Well, like I mentioned in the introduction, there is two verses in the New Testament where you have what's called the Granville Sharp rule apply, and we'll see this at the end, I'll talk about these at the end, where we have this referring to Jesus, but it refers to him as both God and Savior. Now, if this rule holds up, then these two verses argue, contribute to the argument to say that Jesus is God. However, before I go on from here, let me uh, just point out very briefly that the Granville Sharp rule is not necessary for the argument that Jesus is God. There are plenty of other arguments to support the fact that Jesus is God. Two books in particular that I want to point you to. One is Putting Jesus in His Place by uh, this book here, which is a really good book. It goes through five basic arguments about why Jesus is God. None of them relate to, or well, none of them depend on the Granville Sharp Rule, uh, so that's worth looking at. The other one is Murray Harris's Jesus as God, this book, which is quite a technical in-depth look at lots of different Greek constructions that point to the reality that Jesus is God. Greek is one of the core elements is really helpful to know if you sort of read this book. But this is a great book just to sort of help walk through some of the arguments as well. Uh, it has a little bit more of the language stuff in it. There's some of that in putting Jesus in his place as well, but this is much more uh, of a language-oriented tool. However, both these books make strong arguments for the deity of Christ without depending on 
the Granville Sharp Rule. And I'll leave links to both these books in the description below if you want to go pick them up from there. So let's talk about some examples of the Granville Sharp Rule that nobody argues with. Now, okay, remember what I'm saying here is that people have said, well, the Granville Sharp Rule was really just made up to fit this, these two verses to support the deity of Christ. But these people don't argue with the Granville Sharp Rule in all these other instances that we find. And I'm not going to go through all the instances of the Granville Sharp Rule in this video. I'm just going to pick out a handful and just sort of walk through them. We're going to look at uses of the Granville Sharp Rule where it's just used of regular everyday people. And maybe they're not quite so everyday in some cases. But the point is they're just human beings. That's the point. The first one we're going to look at is in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 21 where it says, Tychicus, the beloved brother, and faithful servant. And you can see here from the Greek construction that Tychicus is the referent. He's it's obviously talking about Tychicus, and it refers to him using ho agabetos adelphos. Okay, so that's adelphos is brother. Ki uh, pistos diakonos, diakonos is servant. So here you've got the article, then an adjective noun, then ki, that's the joiner, and then we have another adjective noun. So ho, adelphos, ki, and diakonos are all functioning in a Granville Sharp construction. Tychicus is both a brother and a servant according to this verse. Now we're clearly referring to the same person. They both are referring to Tychicus. Nobody debates that Tychicus is both a brother and a servant according to this writing of Paul's. So the Granville Sharp rule is not contested in this verse at all. Another example of this we see in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9, I am John, your brother and sharer in the tribulation and kingdom. And here again we have your brother and sharer. Those are two substantives that are referring to the same person, namely John. And so again we see article, noun, key, plus Another, uh, another noun or substantive that comes with that. So again, this is an example of the Granville Sharp rule that nobody disagrees with. Not only do we see this used of regular people, and those are just a couple of examples, there's lots more you can find. We also find the Granville Sharp rule used pretty consistently to refer to God as well. So for instance, in John chapter 20, verse 17, my father and your father, my God and your God. In both these cases, you got God, you got father and father, God and God, all referring to the same person. And the only distinction here is to swap it back and forth between the speaker, Jesus, and the listener or the recipient, which is in this case is going to be the disciples. And so in this case, again, God and Father are both referring to the same person. And we find this in other places as well. For instance, in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 uh, and 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3, we find, blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And again, the God and Father. God and Father are both referring to the same person. This is referring to God and nobody debates this. And this is an example of the Granville Sharp rule. We have the article, we have a substantive, we have key, plus we have another substantive very clearly referring to God. Again, nobody's debating that this is a good example of a Granville Sharp rule. So we find this then used of regular people, we find it used of God, and we find it used of Jesus as well. Now, when we find it used of Jesus, we find it used of Jesus in a couple of places where it actually doesn't have any bearing on his position as God. And nobody debates these particular instances that this is referring to Jesus and therefore is an example of the Granville Sharp rule. We have in Mark chapter 6 verse 3 for instance, this is the carpenter, the son of Mary and the brother of James. Now, while Mary and James are definitely people that are different, both the son and the brother both are referring to the same person, namely this carpenter. We have an article, we have a substantive, we have key, plus we have another substantive. Therefore, we have another Granville Sharp construction. And in this case, it's referring to Jesus. And again, nobody's debating this particular instance. Now, in Peter's speech on the day of Pentecost, he also, at least Luke records him, using a Granville Sharp construction, where we have article, noun, key, and another noun. In this case, it is, you rejected the holy and righteous one. In this case, both of these are adjectives, but they are substantives, are standing in the place of a noun. So the holy one and the righteous one, that's who we're talking about. And in both cases, you rejected not two people, the one who is holy and the one who is righteous. They're referring to the same person. This one that they rejected then is both holy and righteous, 
and this is again referring to Jesus. And there is no debate over this construction as far as I'm aware. This is another example of a Granville Sharp construction because we have article, substantive, key, plus another substantive. So we can see then that the Granville Sharp rule is used of regular people, it's used of God, and it's used of Jesus. And none of these are particularly controversial. The funny thing is, though, that when we get to the following two verses, suddenly the Granville Sharp rule is made up or is invalid for some reason. And the only reason that I can see that it's possibly invalid is because you reject the deity of Christ outright, and therefore you cannot allow the Granville Sharp rule to stand in this particular instance. Let's look at these two instances very briefly. The first one is in Titus 2 verse 13, which says we are waiting for the blessed hope and appearing of the glory of, and here's where it gets into it, we got an article of the great God and Savior. So here we have the article 2, genitive article in this case, plus theoki sotiros, which is your uh, two substantives joined by Kai, governed by, the first one governed by that article 2. And so here we have another Granville Sharp construction. This one, clearly both of these refer to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is mentioned in opposition to this construction immediately following on from it. And so we have here another example of the Granville Sharp construction. Theo and Soteros both refer to the same person and therefore that same person, whoever it is, and in this case it's clearly Yesu Kristu, is both of those things, God and Savior. And so this is a good example, and this is the debatable example, at least from those who deny the Trinity, that Jesus is actually God, and he is Savior as well. And the other example, of course, is 2 Peter 1 verse 1, which is interesting given that we had an example before of 1 Peter 1 verse 3, where we had blessed is the God and Father, which is referring to God using the the same construction, the same author, and yet 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, which says in the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, again, making it clear that Jesus Christ is the one being spoken about. But here we have, again, the same thing. We have that genitive article 2, Theo, plus then we have uh, Ki Sotedos again, exactly the same construction. So we have God and Savior again joined in that Granville Sharp construction, both referring to the same person and therefore affirming that Jesus is both God and Savior. Now, like I said, the entirety of the deity of Christ does not depend on this rule. So if you're going to argue on the basis of these two verses that the Granville Sharp rule doesn't apply, because of whatever reason, well, the only reason to argue that it doesn't apply is because you simply won't, won't accept that Jesus is God. We have lots of other examples where the Granville Sharp rule applies that nobody debates, and if the Granville Sharp rule doesn't apply here, then you have to explain why it doesn't apply in those other instances as well. Nobody denies the Granville Sharp rule when it refers to regular people. Nobody denies the Granville Sharp rule when it refers to God. Nobody even denies the Granville Sharp rule when it refers to Jesus in other capacities. But if it refers to Jesus as God and Savior, now suddenly we have a problem. I believe that the reason is not because there's anything wrong with the Granville Sharp rule as such, the problem is that we're reading into the scripture starting from a theological position that denies what the scripture is plainly saying, and therefore we have to work around what the scripture plainly says. Now I know I'm kind of arguing forcefully here, and, and, and the reason for that is that I believe the scriptures clearly affirm that Jesus is God, and I believe that we therefore have a responsibility to worship him as the only true God. And so that's my encouragement to you is to embrace what the scriptures say. Allow this to move your heart to worship of the one true God and Savior, namely Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, hit the like button. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so that you get notified when new videos come out. If you are interested in a t-shirt like this one that actually works with Greek, let me know in the comments below as well, uh, because if so, we might end up making one and making it available for a short time. Uh, but otherwise, put a comment in the comment section below just saying Granville. That way I know you got to the end of the video. Thanks again for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.